Would you like to see a smooth and easy example of setting up QuickBooks Online? Well then you should follow this video step by step. Chart of accounts and list of names in QuickBooks Online for home finance. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. You must prepare your chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. An account is simply a record of transactions. You need a separate account meaning a separate record for each operating account you have which means you need a separate record for each bank account you have and each credit card account you have. You also need an account meaning a separate record for each expense category you have. You need a separate account record for each general income source you have and of course you should keep a separate account to manage the cash that comes and goes to and from your pocket. Now here are the example operating accounts that we will use in the QuickBooks Online Home Finance course. We have a bank account in Chase Bank. We have a bank account in M&T Bank. We have a credit card with Capital One and we have a credit card with Citibank and of course you need a separate record for the cash on hand so we are going to add these accounts to the QuickBooks Online chart of accounts so we can record transactions in these records as they come up now here are the accounts that we're about to put in to the QuickBooks Online chart of accounts and you may notice that each of the accounts has a name, a type, and a detail type. And you have to put in all three pieces of data before QuickBooks Online will allow you to save the account in the chart of account list. So what is account name? Well, the name can be anything you want as long as you know what it means when you look at that number on your financial reports. Exactly what you type into the name field will be exactly how it is shown on the financial reports that we discussed in a prior video. Account type determines what type of transactions can be recorded into that account. And it also determines which financial statements and reports that account will show up on. It also determines the position of that account in the report that the account will show up on. And the detail type is another piece of data that's usually not relevant. Sometimes it would add functionality to an account, but that's very rare. We will not need this in the QuickBooks for Home Finance course, but we must tell QuickBooks Online the detail type of the account or QuickBooks Online will not allow us to save the account on the list of accounts. So here are the first five accounts that we're going to put in to QuickBooks Online. There are two ways to open the chart of accounts. You could click the cog wheel in the top right and then go over to chart of accounts or from the left panel menu you could click accounting chart of accounts. Now when I click this you might see something a little bit differently on your screen if it's the very first time that you are opening your chart of accounts. You see when I open my chart of accounts I get a list of the accounts that have already been placed in the chart of accounts by QuickBooks Online. You might see on your screen a little green button that says hey Let's take a look at your chart of accounts for the first time. 
All you have to do is click that little green button in front of you and you will come to this very same window. A list of accounts, a list of records where each account is a separate record of either expenses, income, or anything else. Now, we're going to put in each of these five one by one. We will put the name, the type, and the detail type. And we will make sure we type in the name in capital letter so that our eyes can clearly distinguish between the accounts that we added and the accounts that QuickBooks Online added. So, Chase Bank is a bank type of account and the detail is checking. So we scroll all the way up and we click New. Now, we leave account type as bank but the detail type is checking and the name is Chase Bank. So we're going to put now instead of clicking save and close we will click save and new and that will save the account on our list of accounts without closing the window. The next one is M&T Bank which is a bank type of account and its savings. So this is bank, this is savings, and this will be M and then we click save and new. What's the next one? The next one is Capital One credit card and of course they're both credit cards. So we choose credit card Detail type has to be credit card. The name can be Save and New. Then we have Citibank credit card. And of course, Save and New. And the last one will be cash on hand, which is a bank type of account specifically for cash on hand. So this will be bank. The detail type will be cash on hand. And we can even leave the name cash on hand. But I like it in capitals so it's clear that this is one that we added. Now we can click save and close and you can see the ones in capital letters are the ones that we added and the ones in lowercase are the ones that QuickBooks Online gave us. Expenses are things you pay for. The vendors are the people whom you pay and they go on a different list and you need a list for both. For example, FedEx and UPS are both vendors they are the people whom you pay for the service but delivery expense is the service that you pay them for so delivery expense goes as an account in your chart of accounts anything that goes in your chart of accounts is something that you need a record of so it doesn't matter if you pay FedEx or UPS what matters is in the chart of accounts you have an account which is a set of records for every time you paid for delivery regardless of whom you paid. Here is a list of all of Joe Schmo's typical home expenses and here are all the vendors that provide those services for Joe. Notice that some of them are duplicated because you could have two vendors for one expense and you uh, like like for delivery you could have UPS and FedEx and notice for your mortgage both interest and principal Chase Bank is the vendor in both of those cases if we separate the expenses and make a separate list these are the names of the expenses that will go in the chart of accounts they go in the chart of accounts with the accounts from the previous video because each one will be a separate record this way you know the total that you paid for each expense regardless of whom you paid. So let's go ahead and input the expenses and the vendors. The expenses go in the chart of accounts just like we did a moment ago 
and the vendors go on a separate list called the vendors list. So first let's focus on putting in the expenses in the chart of accounts. So we click accounting chart of accounts in case you're not in the chart of accounts. Then in the top right you click new and every one of these will be expense type of account and the detail type can simply be the one called other business expenses. That's all you have to put for each of these detail types. The name of the first one is delivery. And then we can do save and new. After delivery, we have vet bills. So we can put then save and new. After vet bills, electric expense. Save and new. Then telephone expense. Then mortgage, or at least the principal, we'll put in mortgage interest and principal as separate accounts. So we will put mortgage, which is really not an expense, but we will get to that later. Interest. And the last expense is bank fees. Now we can click save and close and you will notice that these accounts have been added to the expense section in the chart of accounts. Now when we put the related vendors, meaning whom we pay, we will put them in the vendors list. And in our example, we will only put the names. In a real situation, you could reopen the list and add address, telephone, email, or any other piece of data that you would like to save with your vendors. But for the purposes of this course, we will just put the names. The way to open the vendors list is to click Expenses and then go over to Vendors. Of course, right now, the vendor list is empty and it's very simple to add a new vendor. Now when we click New Vendor, you have the opportunity to put more than just the name. I suggest you first click Company and put in the company name, and then on your keyboard push Tab. That will copy the company name into the display field. In a real situation, you can add an address, you can add a phone number, mobile number, fax number, even their email address if you feel it necessary to keep these records. You could even add a set of notes about a particular vendor, something you might want to remind yourself about the vendor before you do business again with this vendor. And you could put that in the notes and keep track of it that way even attaching files like pictures or documents to the vendor information. We will not. We will simply put the name so that we can use the vendor for our home finance transaction. And when you click Save, notice that vendor has been added to the list. Let's add FedEx, Dr. Kirk, and Con Edison. New Vendor. Push Tab, click Save. New Vendor. Push Tab and Save. Then New Vendor. By the way, Con Edison is the people whom we pay our electric bill to if you live in New York City. Save. Who else do we have? I guess it's just AT&T, 
Verizon, Chase Bank, okay, new vendor, tab, save, new vendor, tab, save. You can pause the video if I'm going too quickly. Chase Bank and M&T Bank. Chase Bank. Tab. Save. And lastly, M&T Bank. Tab and save. Notice we have a list of vendors that we could reopen. You can always double click the name to see just the records for that vendor. Then of course you could click edit to go back to that vendor's specific area of data. Income accounts will go on the chart of accounts and they will show you why and where the money came in from. However, customers are the people whom you received the money from. So for example, if Joe Schmo has four separate income sources, they would be listed this way, bartending job weekdays, bartending job weekends, landscaping, and bank account interest. For each of these four income sources, there's a person or a company that has to be put on the customer list so we know who the money is coming in from. For example, his weekday bartending job, he works for Molly's Saloon. However, his weekend bartending job, he works for the Beer and Go. Both of these are the names of the bars that he works for, but when he earns the money, it goes into bartending income. He does landscaping for a guy named Dave Parada, and of course, he gets bank account interest as one of his sources of income, and that would be Chase Bank. These four individuals would go on his customer list so he could track exactly how much money came in from each customer and find his transactions that way. Each of these four income sources would go in the same chart of accounts that we have been using all along, but they will be income type of accounts. Let's take a look at how to record this. Let's track both bartending jobs together in bartending income and keep the others separate. So for the chart of accounts, we click Accounting, Chart of Accounts. Then in the top right, we click New. Now these will all be income accounts, and the detail type will simply be Other Primary Income. So for the first one, we type in And then, of course, we click Save and New. The next income account will be Landscaping Income. And, of course, we click Save and New. And the last income account will be Bank Account Interest. And then because this is the last one, we can click Save and Close. Now we know that a person doesn't really have customers, but the people or the organizations that pay us should go on the customers list. So to open the customers list, we click Sales, Customers. Notice it looks exactly like the vendors list, which we already know how to manage. In the top right, we click New Customer, and we see the same set of data that we saw a moment ago for vendors. And we manage li this list the same way. Company, we go push Tab, and then click Save. And now Molly's Saloon is here on the list of customers. And then, of course, we can click Sales customers to go back to the list. We have the beer and go, no problem. New customer,
and then tab, and then save. So it's physically slightly different because we're still in this customer, this individual customer. We have to go back to sales, customers, and we see now it's been added to the list. And we have to put in Dave Parada. He's the one who pays us for landscaping. New customer. tab, save. Now after we save, we're in his record, so we have to go sales, customers, to go back to the main customer list. Then in the top right, new customer, and we'll put Chase Bank. Click save, and congratulations, oh, sorry, Chase Bank. Well, all right, well, we already have it on the list, so that's it. We're done. And now we have all the customers we need to record the transactions in QuickBooks Online.